Hello and welcome to Good Morning Vibrations, a format of the digital TV channel of the German-speaking issue of Forbes. My name is Andrea Glesemann, I'm senior editor, and I'm happy to start the day with you. Under the theme, the morning makes the day, diversity makes the difference. In this format, I meet a lot of different personalities, talk with them about their career, what makes them successful, and what we can learn from them. So today, it's absolutely pleasure to welcome Adela Mejic-Janic as my guest today. She knows how to establish a career because six years ago she came to Austria and broke new ground. She didn't know the language, the culture and the professional life, but today she's head of the connectivity service provider division at Mawoko, a manufacturer of um, management platform and connectivity platforms. And she's also the vice president at the Female Leaders Network of the VU Executive Academy. So welcome today. It's absolutely a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, everyone who's watching this. It's an absolute pleasure for me to be a part of this journey. And thank you very much for inviting me. So you know my session, and I'm sure you know what comes next. It's the morning habit question, because there's the common opinion that successful people have a certain morning routine. So do you have one? Oh, I think that's the toughest question that you're going to ask me today. Uh, but for me, so the, the morning routine changes. I like to, I like to try new things out. Uh, but what, is, what sticks with uh, all of the days and the past couple of years is trying to start my mornings pretty slow. Uh, with a cup of lemon water, warm one, just, you know, to cleanse, to, to refresh, to freshly start the new day. As well, a cup of tea before I start with my first coffee, before I start, you know, uh, putting something in, in writing or whatever. So I like to journal from time to time, just when I feel about it. I like to read a couple of pages of the book from time to time. Or today in the morning, I listen to one of the songs that, you know, lifts my mood up uh, so that I can just, you know, walk around the apartment, uh, get in the mood uh, of the day. And once I have my first coffee, of coffee uh, I usually start with writing things I, I enjoy writing I'm very uh, analog when it comes to writing and these things I just put it in my uh, in my paper on the paper and say okay these are the three things that I have to do these are the people that I'm going to meet these are the things that I want to do today so but really starting uh, starting slowly and taking taking the time for it and it took me some some years to to get to this point where I feel okay around 9 30 this is the first meeting that I have 10 o'clock and just till the end of the day. So that works magically for me. Perfect. So let's talk a little bit uh, about your background. So why did you decide to move to Vienna and how was it to start in a foreign country? Oh, that's a great question. And uh, yes, it wasn't an easy decision. I, I, I think that's the first thing because now when you look back, you say, okay, it was so, you know, we came here, we found a job and everything works out and look me where I am now. I think it's very important to just, you know, set the tone and go back to these couple of years when my husband and I were just, um, we took the time before we, we decided to make this move. Uh, so it took us a couple of months uh, to figure out where we want to go. But the decision was there already a couple of years back, back then where we just said, okay, we feel that we want to do more things. We, we feel that we, we exceeded the growth possibilities and opportunities that we have uh, here. And we feel that we can do way, way more in our life. And um, this was always this kind of discussions that you usually have. And um, at some point we decided that it was in my career, I was, I was, I was leading a couple of teams uh, back in Sarajevo. And I just felt this is not what I want. And I felt myself that I can't uh, make difference over there, that it's just nine to five job. And no matter how much effort you put, you don't see that you move forward as well for yourself and for your team. And that's when, when we uh, decided to, to, say, to say, yes, we want to move. Uh, and that was the question where. And Vienna was one of the reasons why uh, Vienna is it's very close to our home country. It's close to our families. You always have, we always had this idea, okay, we will come back. And so we still have this uh, intention. We're still uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a way of building bridges uh, between these uh, two countries. So we never left basically. So we left in order to come back. Uh, and we, we, we are still working towards that. And um, 
Yeah, when we came here, it was uh, it was a fast start. It was a really, really fast track. And throughout my career, I had a super fast tracks in many, many areas where I look back and reflect. Uh, but basically, I had a, a really good uh, uh, chance to meet uh, some great people who um, handed my, me support, who said, okay, what is that you need? How can I support you? And to be honest, here in Austria, there's many, many people, big communities as well from Bosnia, from Balkan countries as well, who, uh, like myself, have started from the ground zero. So basically, they, they moved here back in the years during the war, after the war, or just came here to study. So, you know, you have this opportunity to connect, you know, there's one thing that connects us all here. So this idea, we want to make big things, and we went through that journey, and we want to give it back to the community. And I think I was at the, at the great, you know, perfect timing. It was there uh, to come here and just meet all these people. And now it's, it, now it's a different story. Now it's a different story. Now I'm the one who's giving back, and now I'm the one who's just you know, being very active there, very vocal, talking about my starts, sharing my story, uh, just to tell the people that it is possible, but it as well, you know, um, takes some years. So it's not something that you click and say, okay, that's, that's how it goes. But definitely recommendable. If you have an idea that you just feel, okay, this is not the right environment for me, and it can be metaphorical as well, like in the company or in the, you know, in your community or people that you're surrounded with, um, you know, give it a try, give it a try, and then you will see how it works for you. So what do you think what makes you successful? I mean, what certain mindset maybe is needed to be successful? I think you don't, um, you don't have, you, you can't give up. So this is, I think that's the, the first thing. You have to come back over and over and over again. I think that's the, when people will start uh, taking you seriously, because if you look into uh, successful people, successful leaders around the world. And, and nowadays, you know, these are the people that uh, stay very uh, true to their message. They are very authentic in what they are saying and they keep coming, you know. And some of them, they had really hardship in their life where they had like to, to, to fight uh, for their rights and to fight to, to, um, for other people as well in their community. So you have to come back. So it's, it's very important. So because if you go twice somewhere or three times and you say, okay, I would like to do this, and you have to do your work. You know, you have to do this. this I think that goes along all these, these stories. You have to put the work there in the things that you, that you believe in it. And one of the other things that I would like to add as well that goes very well along those lines is you have to have your inner circle or your support circle or people around you um, that are your best cheerleaders. That's what we like to say. You have to be the chief cheerleader in order to, to be someone close to me that I can go to and say, okay, I did this. And you're just, you know, super excited for me and vice versa. So I think that's, if you go, uh, if you look to the biographies of some successful people, and I can definitely relate to that. And you have to put, you know, you have to intentionally, mindfully go into that and say, okay, this doesn't work anymore for me. This doesn't serve me anymore. So what is that is missing uh, in there? And I, I'm, uh, I have been working with uh, some um, people throughout my career. So since like a couple of last years, four years at least, with mentors, with coaches, with people who uh, build up an amazing career, uh, who, have, uh, who are sharing back to the community. So I can definitely recommend uh, this is at least the starting point if you're thinking about okay where to start find find a mentor go be part of the com community looking inside inwards what is that uh you believe it's missing in your journey now you talked a little bit uh, about the importance of uh, networks and as i mentioned you are the vice president um, at the female leaders network so let's be more concrete how yeah. to network successfully uh, maybe how not to, maybe we start with how not to. And uh, one of the things is definitely uh, showing once, once a year at a certain event conferences and just strolling around and handing your business cards as it goes to, yeah, that could be interesting for me, handing over and never following up. Uh, I think that's that's how you not do it. And, and if I really say how not to do it and then the, how to do it, it, uh, it comes naturally basically. Um, networking, as it says itself, I, I read it somewhere and it's amazing, it says networking. So that you go out there and you put some work into it. You know, it's, it's exactly. And it go, goes along with the line saying, okay, showing up, 
coming again and again, be it on a weekly basis or a monthly basis or wherever fits you uh, in your career, wherever you are, you have to show up. You have to follow up uh, around uh, things that we have discussed and you have to uh, basically be the one who's serving the community. So who's giving back. So it, networking is not about going somewhere, uh, getting your goals checked and, and leave. And that's not the networking, that's not the building relationship that, I, that I, I'm into it. Uh, that can be done, but it will definitely not serve you in, on, on a long run. Uh, so, and when it comes to the networking as well, so it should be around your interests. So I don't, I, I, back in the days, I used to visit most of the networking networks, most of the events, but they all had the, the reason why I was there. Is it, it has to be a reason why you're there. Is it, uh, you want to learn new, new things because that's around your topic or you want to meet people and vote. So it has to serve your, your purpose. So it's not just about going there and, and, uh, being a plant. It's not. No, just not moving. And I had some interesting, you know, uh, people that taught me this thing. So people that taught me all these things. So people who have, who are following me on my, my journey and people who have seen me and say, okay, how about that? How about that? And, um, uh, if you're serious about these things, it's definitely recommendable to surround yourself and look hard. Who are these amazing people that are doing these things that you would like to do? And how can you approach them? So I have a couple of people who are way, way, way uh, above. So beyond my where I am at the moment. And what I do, I catch up with them uh, on a monthly basis, uh, just for a, for a nice coffee or you know for, for drinks or just nowadays we have Zoom. And it's like, okay, what do you think about this idea? Uh, how do you think that? Uh, what are the new trends? What are new ideas for new people that are that I should be following and and looking that they're doing amazing work in their community? So I think um, you need to go out. You need to go out. You need to meet people. And you need to, you need to follow up. When I say follow up, if you like the conversations that we had, you just need to follow up it via email or LinkedIn or being being present over there is definitely important and being vocal. I would say maybe that's what I forgot. When you go networking, why are you there? What are your goals? What are your goals? If you are looking, are you looking for a job? Okay, then say I'm looking for a job in this and that uh, industry, not just like. Oh, you know, you have to you have to steer people, and that's what people love. Especially you know, if you if you meet professionals, you, you it's it's like you get five minutes, ten minutes max. You go there and say, "I'm looking for another job," or "I'm looking for this." Do you have contact with that, or do you know someone who has uh, this contact? So a lot of things to talk about that. That we could do a separate session about it. <laughs> Maybe we should do so. So when yes. yes, when having a look at the current pandemic, uh, networking uh, was not that easy, at least not in a physical way. So um, how was your reaction to the to the shutdown and do you have some some um, essential um, coping strategies um, in, in general or uh, related to networking uh, in do general in general in general so I think the first couple of uh, I, you know, the first couple of weeks um, I believe they have been most uh, more or less the same for for all of us it was just realizing from from like suddenly everything is, is closed down and you just um it wasn't this transition from you know from office to to your home office in in my case because you know i'm working in a software industry we all work uh we are used to working from home we are used to working for whatever you want as long as the project is is going so this idea this transition for me wasn't uh wasn't that that serious so to say it was like done like that uh, but for me, it was definitely uh, the first first couple of weeks was realizing for the business on the business side, okay, where are we? Uh, what is with the project that we are running? Because we work for uh, global companies, you know, it's it's uh, how it, how this crisis is going to reflect economically, financially uh, to these projects, uh, for instance, for our customers in the US or in Asia. So that was the firstly realizing, okay, where are we? The first is establishing, okay, we are all good, everyone is, is safe, healthy, we can all uh, work from home, check, check, check. And then the other was, okay, how this is going to um how it is going to reflect uh, on our business and, and uh, of course talking to people around you. It's, I think it was, was very important for me just talking to people, to my contacts, to my network, going back to them and say, okay, how does, how does it work for you or what works for you? How is your uh, industry experiencing these, these changes? And then you realize, okay, we are more or less everyone is on the same boat basically. So it's, it's happening. So what is, once you establish that groundwork is like, what is that we can do? 
with the resources that we have, with the possibility that we have, so what is where we want to put the focus. And this is what we, what that we basically did. We, of course, experienced reshuffling of the projects, moving the projects to, the, to, to next year, for instance. But as well, that opened the, the, the window, basically, of possibilities that new projects get in. Uh, to be to be developed. So from that side, I think it was very, uh, very, uh, very good. On the other hand, for me as a person, personally, it was more. Uh, I went through the. You know, I grew up during the war time when everything was in, during in, in Bosnia, and I saw this moving from one place to another, and. Um, it brought a lot of memories. It lot, brought a lot of memories of this, you know, just being on one place, being stuck to something, locked down, uh, borders being being closed. I think that that was on, on that level. It was very, very hard. You know, I, my family is doing well back in Bosnia, and, and they're all healthy and safe, and things got that all is done. But you know, this feeling, okay, I can't. I have to stay here, and I can't move, and brings back memories, of course. But um, I would say once you go through these this sorts of experiences, okay, war is, is a different experience. It's a, it's a tough one, it's a hard one, uh, but we all have this crisis that we went through our life. So there's, I, I never met a person who didn't go to different sorts of crisis on many levels. And it's very good to go back to, the, to this experience. How did you overcome it? So what was at back that point, for instance, during the war or after the war, rebuilding everything, losing everything and starting all over again, many times in my life. So it's always good to go back and see what was good at back then. And definitely what, is, what, is, what you don't need during the crisis is freaking out. It, it, that's, that's just gonna waste your energy. That's just gonna waste your energy. So if freaking out is, uh, is not an option, just you know, realize, okay, this is where I am. This is where I want to go, and this is this is how it looks like. And sometimes it it, it takes time. It definitely takes time. You need the time to to bridge this too. And for me, as I told you, I've worked with uh, coaches uh, for over the last couple of years, and they have been instrumental in keeping me um, up up sane, basically keeping me focused on on things that we that we were uh, starting to build from the beginning of this year uh, making sure that i show up for for my team identifying things that um that could be that i didn't feel right you know you know this feeling in the stomach when you feel like okay something is not right something is missing missing what it is and if you have this way in in dealing with things you have as as we said showing up and dealing with things and not just hiding it under the carpet for me for instance was journaling i i when the, when everything shut down i go i went back to journaling I, every morning getting up and start writing at least like three uh pages of how do i feel how do i feel what does it mean and then at some point you feel this okay now now i got now some puzzles uh came together but as long as you, you know you you keep coming back and you keep uh asking for people, asking for support, uh, seeing how the others are dealing with, trying to take what, what, what fits you in the best way in your uh, circumstances, because not everything fits, not every size fits to all, but, um, you know, taking it out and realizing the big picture. You know, so I think it's very important to have, keep big picture in mind, say, okay, I'm good, I'm safe, I'm healthy, my team is doing well, my family is doing well, I, I can't travel around the world, but I can travel around here. Uh, and that's, that's all you need. You know, it's, it's life is too short to basically, you know, think about all these places where I haven't been, but forgetting all the places where I can go. So thank you, Adela. It was really interesting. And um, I hope you guys out there enjoyed the session as much as I did. And I would like to recommend you to subscribe uh, this channel so you won't miss a session ever again. And a special thanks to you, Adela. It was such a pleasure. And I wish you and you, all of you guys out there a really nice day. See you soon. Stay healthy. Stay in business. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you soon.